I'm Lindsay, and I spent a year converting my 2013 Chevy Express into a camper van. And even though it's not totally done yet, it's time for my first official trip. This is the Montana Loop, a route I created that will take me to six different national parks over the course of one month on the road. Come with me as I fulfill my goal of seeing every park here in the United States and all the adventures that come with it. If I like really think about it and like zoom all the way out on Google Maps and like realize that I came all this way from home in Massachusetts, uh, I feel a little physically ill. <laughs> it's like the it's like the horizontal distance version of vertigo, whatever that is. <laughs> um, but. I am finally here in Montana. And um, after like over 2000 miles of driving, I only have a couple hundred more to go until I get to Glacier National Park. Today is Sunday, so I am expecting it to be quite crowded there. Um, but I have like five more weekdays to spend there. So I'm not uh, too worried about that. Uh, I'm also hoping I can grab one of the first come first serve campsites at one of the campgrounds near East Glacier. So I'm gonna get moving. I've been waiting almost three years to return to Glacier National Park. Back in 2019, when I visited Montana for the first time during a camera workshop with Sony, I had no idea that being here would make me feel so alive. So I promised myself that I would come back. And now I'm finally here again and hoping to spend even more time in this place that I never stopped thinking about once I left. So my um, drive to Glacier was somewhat delayed uh, because I got my drone stuck in a tree. So. Uh, it took me like two hours, but I finally retrieved it. It's totally fine, worth all the effort. But um, uh, when I got here, the campground was full. So I actually think I'm going to try the Ptarmigan Tunnel, which is this 10 mile trail that ends in an incredibly lengthy tunnel blasted through the side of the mountain. It's basically like the needles tunnel on steroids. So I'm gonna go drive to that trailhead, um, get ready and uh, get on the trail.
right there, see? There's a grizzly bear up there. a bit of a traffic jam back there because there was a grizzly on the, like right on the trail. Uh, basically she was just interested in eating berries. She was quite young but we had to wait for like 20 minutes until she decided to go back up the hill. Look at the snow up there. I think you can see behind me, but uh, that is snow. Um, I'm basically almost there. That is Ptarmigan Lake. And so the tunnel I think is up there, maybe? God, I hope not, but I think it is. As I rose above Ptarmigan Lake, with each step, I barely recognized myself. Almost 10 years ago, at my worst, it felt like there was no getting better. No reward. No light at the end of the tunnel. But now it feels like I'm finally here. I'm on the other side. I just started crying. <laughs> oh. 
Like, look at where, look at where I am. I see it, I see the hole in the side of the mountain. I'm, I'm right here, I'm almost there. I just have to go up like this one final pass and then I'm there after coming up from all of this and way down there and, and beyond. So, better be worth it. Okay, here it is, the hole. what's at the light at the end of the tunnel. Way at the, off in the distance, on top of that mountain, that is a glacier. Uh, I was told it was a Hearn Glacier. Not sure, but uh, that was kind of nice to see, unexpectedly. <laughs> Had a nice little rest back at that little waterfall area with the bridge, um, and that was good enough for me. But I'm about a mile away from the trailhead, so about to get out of here, shower, and uh, enjoy the rest of the night. After yesterday's very long hike to the Ptarmigan Tunnel, um, I've been taking it pretty easy today and um, just hanging around the campground, mainly watching YouTube videos and texting people. But it's almost two now, so I think I'm gonna head to the Apakuni Falls Trailhead and maybe try to jump in some water. I expect it to be very cold, but I don't mind. <laughs> the Apakuni Falls trailhead and people were like yelling bear as I was getting ready here in the parking lot and it was just like really I mean it was right there um, and once it started getting real close I pulled my safety alarm here because it's loud as shit and kind of just pointed it in the general direction the bear scared away <sighs> okay I think the excitement is over so Gonna make sure I give the bear sufficient space, make a lot of noise, and hike to this waterfall.
how to address it. <laughs> um, I know it was kids, because there's a ton of kids on this show, but I keep coming across little stacked rock piles, and uh, it's generally not good to do. Uh, there's a number of reasons, honestly. I'm not educated enough to tell you why not to do it, but it's generally not something you're supposed to do as part of a leave no trace principle, and so I tend to like dismantle the piles, just kind of shove them over with my toe. Uh, but I've gotten three so far, so we'll see if it, uh, if I come across any more. Alrighty, here is another culprit. This is uh, what I'm talking about. They aren't marking a trail, they aren't doing anything. Uh, so it is in the best interest to just kind of dismantle them. Sorry, kids. I think that's it. <laughs> Well, by the time I showered and made dinner and everything last night, I was too tired to have a fire. And uh, that, that makes me so disappointed in myself. I know there will be other opportunities, but uh, you know, just wanted to give it a shot. So I'm gonna get out of here hopefully kind of soon. See if I can potentially get a backpacking permit for Cracker Lake. Um, if not, I will figure out what else I might do. Might go to the other side of the park. Um, might do a couple of shorter hikes around here. Um, but I'll just see how it goes. So, uh, slight change of plans. Um, my legs, it's not even my legs, I was just like generally exhausted. So, uh, I actually slept a little more. And uh, when I went to the East Glacier entrance, uh, they had the sign up again that was like, you know, like the lots are full. Um, and it's kind of late in the day, so I was like, you know, there's no way I'm getting a permit, especially not for today, it's just not gonna work out. And I only have two days left here, so I'm currently making my way towards the west side of the park. Um, and maybe I'll stop along the way. God, the gas is expensive here because literally there's no other gas stations. <laughs> Shit. Hello. 
Oh, hi there. Do you have an annual pass or a vehicle card pass? I do. That'll work. Did you need any of this? Um, could I, yeah, that'd be great. Thank okay. you. Thank okay. you. Have a good one. Um, so I have literally only gone about like maybe 15, 20 minutes from the East Glacier, Mini Glacier entrance. Um, but um, I am currently near the St. Mary's and Virginia Falls trailhead, um, which I kind of had downloaded, I wanted to do, and I figured I might as well um, check it out while I'm making my way towards the western side of the park. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll even get in the water since yesterday wasn't exactly ideal for that. favorite pair of sunglasses broke. Um, I literally owned two of them, but I actually lost one of them shortly before the trip. And then the one that I have now, like, the hinge is literally just disintegrating. <laughs> so, like, I bought these, but I'm just not used to the way they look, and I'm, like, just a little insecure about them, so tell me if they look bad or not. I'm so glad I stopped here. <laughs> this is so cool. I'm so scared to jump in this, but I'm definitely gonna jump in this. stopped here. That was exactly what I was hoping for. That was so fun and uh, I'm sad to leave but I uh, think I've had enough cold water for one day and uh, it's time to head to West Glacier. So, I made it here last night to the APCAR Visitor Center, and um, it's like 6 in the morning now, and I think this might be my last chance to get a backcountry permit, so I'm gonna see if I can make it happen. I bet. Just like the Yellowstone Right, right. They're already right back around here. So, Trapper's three, because that's... So, that ended up working out really well actually. Um, the trail that I was initially looking at on this side of the park, um, the campground area there was full, but ironically there was a spot open at Cracker Lake. So after coming here last night I am literally just going to drive through the park to the east side once more and um, go backpacking on Cracker Lake.
Going to the Sun Road is a 50 mile long scenic alpine roadway that cuts through the center of Glacier National Park. Normally, you need a permit to drive it to avoid overcrowding, but because I've been in the park since last night, I'm able to use it to get from the west side of the park in Apgar back to the east side of the park to the Cracker Lake Trailhead. Okay, so here's the situation. <laughs> I've made it back to East Glacier um, at the Cracker Lake Trailhead, but um, it's now almost four o'clock um, and the conditions are so windy just down here and already Cracker Lake is known to be like very windy and I just don't feel comfortable with how late in the day it is and how already rough conditions down here are wind-wise. I don't feel great about staking my tent and just making it up there. I Sunset is at like 10 p.m. here, granted, but you know, I just feel like I don't necessarily have enough time and you know, I have one day left here, and I could either use it doing this thing that I had built up in my mind to be, like, the main event and worth it, or I can kind of just go with what I feel and hang out and take a shower and feel less disgusting and just look at the nice sights down here. As much as it feels like an anticlimactic way to end my trip, I think... backpacking is not going to happen. I'm sure my boyfriend and my family will be overjoyed to hear when I text them later. Uh, that I didn't end up going, <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I'll just hang out here and enjoy Glacier from the ground where it is still incredibly fucking windy. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm just, I'm just trying to enjoy myself and, uh, as much as I think I will enjoy Cracker Lake, I feel that I'm potentially putting myself in a situation that will not be so enjoyable later on. So, that said, I'm I'm just gonna hang out today. Just, just do whatever I feel like. Eat a lot of ice cream. Take a shower. Take a shower. Am I extremely disappointed in myself for not going backpacking to Cracker Lake? Yes, but do I think it was the right decision? Also yes. There were just too many variables that would have made the trip miserable rather than enjoyable, and possibly even dangerous. I like to think of myself as an experienced hiker, but sometimes the most experienced thing you can do is not go, especially when conditions are bad. I'm really disappointed I didn't make it to Cracker Lake, but I feel a little better knowing that Glacier is so massive, people who have been living in Montana for years still go back multiple times to see it all. As much as I wanted to take advantage of the limited time I had in the park, it feels like things worked out for the best. I got to see some amazing things, and at the end of the day, I came here to enjoy myself, not to prove myself. But if I'm being honest, I'm already thinking about when I can return to Glacier for a third time.